Hi, and uh, welcome to the third video on uh, how to get married to learn BI. In this particular video, for uh, those who are watching this video for the first time, we're going to cover a few basic things about integration services. We're going to use uh, a few common tasks and uh, tools available in integration services to help Mary with some of the data that she's working with. For those of you who are watching the video uh, from the very first video, you'll follow that first Mary had an Excel sheet. We helped her import that into the database. And after that, we helped her export the data once we've enriched it to a certain extent. And she was able to create some graphs and charts and look at the data into uh, a more summarized general way rather than just looking at individual numbers. So let's look at the video on how to work with integration services. At this point, what Mary's done is uh, she's got integration services because she installed SQL Server, but her data that she's working with is uh, very uh, un unenriched. It's got too much information that's very dilute. She doesn't really have a way to understand which data is important versus which data is not. And we're going to help her work with that because we're going to add or extract certain terms from the data tables that she has and then we'll categorize them and we'll work with that uh, data set from there onwards. So the first thing that Mary needs to do is uh, she needs to get a basic feel for what integration services is about. And integration services is a tool that allows you to integrate a data source with a destination and at the same time while doing that it allows you to manipulate or enrich the data as it moves along the path. Typically a common term that's used for integration services is an ETL tool which stands for E for extract, T for transform and L for load. So the intention here is to just demonstrate what an ETL tool can do. For those of you who already know, we have a data source, which is the SQL Server database. So what Mary is going to do first is uh, she's going to use some of these control flow tasks that you see here. A control flow task basically controls the flow of operations within this particular package. The package is basically a set of instructions that we need the ETL process to follow. Basically, one of the most commonly used tasks in the uh, control flow task option that we have here is one that's called the data flow task. And what data flow task does is that it doesn't control the logical flow of the operations as much as it controls, controls the logical flow of the data. That's why it's called a data flow task. This uses a different engine and this uses a different engine when it comes to implementation. Now, without getting into the details, let's just go ahead and use the data flow task initially and you can see here uh, move data right and with this data that we're about to move here what we want to do is we're trying to extract some information out of the data set that we have in the database so what we need first is to go ahead on the left hand side scroll and get a data source so you can see we've got a number of data sources here we've got ADO.NET, Excel, flat file, ODBC uh, this is change data capture CDC we'll talk about that maybe uh, further down the line. For now let's go ahead and just use an OLEDB source which is uh, what we normally use when it comes to uh, SQL Server. So I'm just gonna call it MS SQL source. Right? You can see a red X next to it. That's because right now we haven't configured this uh, data flow task. So double click that and we need to specify information regarding the uh, data source. So I don't have that data source at the moment so I'm gonna click new and I'm going to type in the information regarding my data source as using Windows authentication and then we got my finance which is the database in which Mary's data is located once you press OK you can see that we've got a table of view that we're going to use as a data access and we just have a single table which is called account so we select that and press columns We'll withdraw or we'll get all the columns out of the database at the moment. So uh, leave everything checked and press OK. So you'll see that the red X has disappeared. But at this point, we don't really have anything useful going on. So we need to add some data transformation tasks now. One of the co co tasks that we want to use is uh, term extraction. Now, there are some really interesting things you can do with term extraction. Uh, probably uh, I will uh, explain that in uh, a coming up video. But just to give you a heads up, we used term extraction in recently to do search engine optimization for one of the uh, websites that we're working on. And the reason for that is because this term extraction actually has a very useful algorithm in it that allows us to uh, do that work. So we'll discuss that later on. 
So now that the dome extraction is uh, implemented, you can see what I did was I dragged and dropped the arrow from the data source to the term extraction um, control and it's got a red X. So here the first thing it's asking me is uh, from where to extract the terms and all the other terms or all the other columns are basically self-explanatory so we need to extract terms from description and as soon as we do that when you check it you'll see that two columns are going to be the output one is the actual term and the second one is a score now the meaning of the term score varies depending on which algorithm you're using which we'll discuss in a minute you can see exclusion this is for common words that you don't want to uh, implement or work with and then we've got the advanced tab where you'll have the term type which is a noun in which case it will just extract individual words from the, uh, the data that you're working with a noun phrase is basically where a sentence or a common collection of words that are repeated frequently are extracted and the last one is a combination of the two of them the score type is the algorithm that we wanted to discuss earlier and frequency basically counts the number of times a particular word occurs in the database or in the table or source that you're working with TFIDF basically stands for text frequency inverse uh, distribution frequency and what this means basically is that for search engines or for any other kind of data that you're working with there is an inverse relationship between the importance of the keyword within that particular text for example common words that occur very frequently have a high score in terms of frequency but a low score in terms of TFIDF because they occur so frequently that their relative meaning within the context of maybe hundreds of documents is less. On the other hand, a very specific or unique keyword like a person's name that appears in maybe say five documents out of uh, 500 has a higher TFIDF score because of its relative uniqueness. So this is usually what's used in search engines to identify the relevant web page for um, websites so when you search for a specific keyword your page if it has that keyword and it is comparatively low in density compared to other text or other pages that you have there the importance of the page in which that text appears significantly jumps up so that's how we use this another way that we used it was to identify the most important sentences in a paragraph when we were creating news summaries Anyway, at this moment, uh, Mary is mainly looking at just the frequency and we're going to say that the term needs to appear at least twice in order for it to be considered for this particular algorithm. So we're not looking for one time or one off words, we're looking for terms that occur very frequently. Uh, we're not worried too much about case sensitivity at the moment, so we'll just leave that and press OK. So now that this is done, it's basically asking that it needs a destination to put the data in. So we're going to go ahead and dump our data into a flat file destination. A flat file destination is basically just a CSV file in which the data gets inserted. You can see right now we don't have any connections, so let's go ahead and click New. We're going to use a delimited file. And uh, just give it a second. We're just going to call it Terms File. give it a location I'm leaving it on the desktop for the time being the extension doesn't matter because the inside the data it will be delimited anyways uh, we're gonna just go ahead and use the normal uh, carriage return line feed and uh, column names will appear in the first row of the data set the term and score and it's gonna be comma delimited we don't need to worry about it because our data doesn't have any commas but if you have real textual data if you're working with paragraphs or things like that it's usually a better idea to leave it with a vertical bar. Under advanced you'll see that the term column is going to be Unicode which is NVARCAR with an output column width of 128 and score is going to be uh, integer data type and uh, that's pretty much it really. Once you press OK you need to go ahead and select the mapping so that the output from the term extraction which is the uh, term and score will map to the two columns in our CSV file called term and score press OK and that's it so now we have an SSI package which will extract the terms from the database so let's go ahead and run it by clicking the uh, start debugging on the top and there we go it's done and these are our terms.
So you can see here we've got Bangalore shopping, all the common terms that are there available in the description column. In the next video, I'll show you how to import this data and then start categorizing it into foreign key tables or primary key tables, basically. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to log on to the website www.enablesbusiness.com.